When it comes to franchises, there are few that boast the popularity of 40k. It's pretty much indomitable as far as grimdark sci-fi goes. Having said that, as soon as a game, or really any media, is associated with 40k, I'm immediately wary. Not because I don't like 40k, but because it's like there's a Games Workshop factory somewhere that pumps out a new 40k game every month or so, and a relatively large portion of these games never live up to their hype. Because a trailer comes out, games advertised, everyone goes mad, starts rioting out of happiness or whatever. Then the game comes out and the best case scenario is, oh that was an okay game. Everyone's forgotten about it like two days after release. I mean it's obvious why, from like a business standpoint. 40k is so popular, why wouldn't you keep releasing games? The issue is that quality is maybe seen as secondary to theme because they know the game will sell regardless to people who just buy everything 40k related. Compare Vermintide and Darktide, it's difficult not to notice that the game with the more popular setting was significantly less well received. This is maybe a little harsh, but when you consider which game came out later, you could argue it's just fatigue because, oh, they've already done that game so many times, but no. In fact, they had such a good foundation and they just proceeded to kind of half-bake the next game. This is probably why most 40k games are just on the higher end of okay. Bolt Gun is the newest 40k related game, a shooter built as an obvious homage to Doom, right down to the 2D sprites and 3D environments. So does it follow the pattern of being somewhere around mediocre? Well, hmm. Throwing aside the 40k stuff for a minute, as a shooter it's so Doom-like you could convince me it was a mod, down to even having three chapters of eight levels, exactly the same as Doom. You land in your luxury 41st century pod home, come out, slice some cultists to bits, get the bolt gun, shoot some cultists to bits, then you rinse and repeat for 23 levels. So simple, right? Let's go into the gameplay a bit, the fundamentals, the movement, the gunplay. Are they good? The movement is kept really simple. You run, you jump, you can bunny hop if you want. It's not a movement shooter after all, so I can't really critique it for that. There is a dash move, which is sort of presented to you as like, oh, an offensive maneuver. It can be used to increase your speed and to da da da, and to dodge attacks. But it can't be used unless you're firmly on the ground. It can only go forward. It puts your weapon away. It doesn't give you iframes. 95% of the time, it's just a suicide button. So yeah, I'll just pretend it was all a dream. What about the guns? Now there's plenty to go on here. They look good. They feel good. They all sound a little subdued, but I'll get back to that later. There are eight in total, and they're dished out slowly over the course of all three chapters, though mostly in the first two. They actually do a good job holding off on just giving you everything right out of the gate, and they slowly introduce these new weapons as the game progresses and gets more difficult. A concept introduced pretty early is that these weapons are upgradable, sort of, kind of, a little bit. The bolt gun has alternative special magazines that can be found, and if you collect a green machine spirit, it boosts your currently held weapon though not always in an obvious way. Each weapon you can see has a power indicator, but honestly is completely meaningless. It may as well be a picture of a dog biscuit. You also have a melee attack available at all times in the form of a chain sword, but at no point do you ever get any upgrades for this. The melee does crap damage, you have to get really close, funnily enough, uh, and there's absolutely no bonus for using it. Enemies drop health and armor when they die, but not only from melee. The only possible advantage is that it saves ammo, and that conveniently shoves one of the game's flaws to the forefront. Ammo is stupidly abundant, as in every arena section has enough ammo for all your guns. Three times over. All the areas between are stuffed with ammo. I was turning away from my computer playing this game and there was just ammo appearing in my room. I would say I literally never ran out of ammo for a weapon before the middle of the second chapter, when you're given a really hard hitting weapon or two to abuse. This isn't a matter of difficulty settings, because I was on the maximum one. Speaking of difficulties, I initially thought they went easy, normal, hard, nightmare. But I played a bit of hard and then decided I wanted to give Nightmare a shot because hard didn't feel like, um, hard. The difference only seems to be damage taken and it still felt relatively easy. But after playing the whole game, I can say that this is less of an issue than I initially thought. The lack of having to actually manage your resources is also less of an issue than I had thought. The problem actually lay with the first chapter being very, very slow to get going. Long levels with little resistance and tons of ammunition. You'll walk into this massive impressive arena, tons of ammo, you're ready for a huge fight, 
and then it'll just be an eight-year-old with a handful of earthworms. Don't get me wrong, it's still fun, like kind of power fantasy style, but it just didn't give me a particularly interesting first impression. And after two hours of that, I'd kind of resigned myself to the fact that the game was easy. But thankfully that's not the case. See, the reason for the chapter being like that was actually more to do with the way they've structured the enemies than anything else. There's no scaling into the late game. Your standard enemies don't get more health or damage or anything, they just are. And most of them are revealed to you by the end of chapter 1. This means theoretically that if they threw more of them at you, from the get-go, they'd have nothing left in later chapters. The second chapter is better paced right from the start. It's less subdued, it's not afraid to back you into a corner with groups of tougher enemies. There's also a lot less labyrinths than there are in the first chapter, which, yeah, fuck off with labyrinths. What's that about? What kind of sick dungeon master is designing these levels? Speaking of enemies, every level apart from a few exceptions, like the initial few where it's just cultists and the occasional chaos marine, falls into one of two categories. They're either Mensa Nerd Cinch or Stinky Nurgle. Sorry to people who wanted corn berserkers. Or... The category determines the type of demons you'll fight, so it's either blue and pink squishy horrors and floaty things, or fat little goblins and swamp frogs. Now, in my experience at least, Cinch levels are significantly easier than Nurgle ones. Projectiles are easier to dodge, and you don't have to deal with tons of rapid, spitting little nerglings. They generally just pull more punches. This would make me a little sad for the big blue man in the sky, but that's what he gets for reading books and generally being a loser, instead of being out on the football field with Papa Nurgle. But yeah, the enemies are generally pretty well designed. I mean, it's great that they omitted hit-scan enemies, because fuck these guys. Bosses, though, mm, no, they were they were on the worst side. Not that there's a lot of them, but the majority of them are just a DPS race. Big sopping wet bullet sponges. A couple of them have some undodgeable, stupid attack if you stay in their vision too long, and they sit there and summon lots and lots of enemies. This removes most tactical consideration. If you try and kite or dodge or whittle them down, they'll just become completely buried in minions they've pulled out of their arse. So you just sit on top of them, do as much damage as fast as possible, and as long as they die before you do, which they do 99% of the time, then fight's done, over, encounter, finished. You don't even have to mop up much, because fights where these bosses are involved tend to not have many fodder enemies, precisely because the bosses summon small legions of them, which proceed to orbit around said boss like they're a woman at a reddit convention. Enough of that shit though. What about sound design? Well, it's sitting there. The real problem comes with the mixing and the sound effects, within the gameplay. The big one is a distinct lack of audiovisual cues. Your indicator that an enemy is behind you and noisily chewing on your vertebrae is that you'll try and walk backwards and find you cannot walk backwards because there's an enemy behind you. Nothing on screen, your health and armor are pretty easy to miss, and the worst part of all, barely any sound. The pattern repeats with most enemies. They don't really make noise. They grunt and gurgle a little, but no real audio cues for any attacks or abilities, even for the bosses. Some of the audio for weapons is also a bit of a joke, like the shotgun sounds less like a firearm and more like rattling a tin can full of beetles. The insect kind, not like fucking Ringo Starr. So the difficult question is whether or not the game is actually worth it. Yes? Question mark? I think it has a hard time standing side by side with a lot of other old school shooters that are around at the moment. But at the same time, it's got a good setting, though that's a given. The beautiful art direction, however, is not a given. The fun and crunchy gameplay, if sometimes a little repetitive. The well done gore effect. The generally favourable level design. The first chapter maybe holds it back a little, but not because it was bad per se, it just drags a little bit. The game could have done with actually trimming some of the fat around that section and using those resources for a bit more enemy variety in the late game. Still, it was on par with a high-end Doom mod, which is higher praise than it sounds. It's just that I don't have to pay for a high-end Doom mod. The game's good points definitely outweigh its bad. Two to one. But if you don't normally enjoy shooters, unless they're really exciting or exceptional, or you're looking for something really innovative and different, maybe give this a miss, but you probably should have known that already. But if you just want a somewhat mindless old school shooter, taking place in potentially the most iconic dark sci-fi setting there is, then yeah, it'll definitely scratch that itch. Also bear in mind that I am an idiot, and this is as a result all the opinions of an idiot, so you could just ignore me completely.